Hi, my name is Tiana Banton, and I am the director of the Central Club Mural Documentary. Tonight, you are going to watch a 20-minute piece about a story of a mural that's been on the walls of Reading for 32 years. Now, this mural, it pays tribute to some of the most monumental historical figures in black history, from Martin Luther King all the way down to Harriet Tubman. And I have to be honest, being able to tell this story and, and shine a light on its existence, and more importantly, highlight the significance and importance of this mural to the black community, especially today, well, it's been the highlight of my career. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the Central Club mural documentary. I've told you everything you need to know. Now, it's up to you. Enjoy. Even when we carried out the project, there was a looming question that came to mind because, as I started to say, we started in remote history and we travelled through time. We talk about a time of African civilization prior to the Europeans and then the history of slavery and colonialism and neo-colonialism and apartheid and so on. And you can see the various figures there that represent struggle and resistance. That is the key theme of the war. It's about struggle. Black people struggle and resistance against exploitation, against oppression. And you will see that there are international figures, there are national figures, but there are also local figures. And I'm reminded, walking today with you, of a newspaper archive material that we used when we were designing the war, which is the image of the late Jeff Allenby who held a placard, and he, just as I marched at the head of you today, Jeff Allenby marched at the head of a demonstration by black youths to tell the council they need a place of their own. You know, I used to have an office above the very building we're in, and it overlooks the mural. And sometimes, as I alluded to earlier, you tend to think it's just a painting. But when you see, looking out the window, people passing by, they stop and they look. And then you see schools turn up with children, and they use it as part of their study uh, to get to know better the histories of our people, you realize that this is something really, really special because it, it resonates on so many levels. And like I said, there's so many historical figures that you could choose one and you know learn their story and it's an eye-opener as to their journey, what they've achieved and what it means to us as a people. So for me, it's a reminder of um, our journey it's not our final destination, but I think it's important that it's in Reading because Reading has a lot of history to do, a lot of English history is tied up here in, in Reading. The Dissolution, um, the Civil War, the Abbey, which is just up the road. So for me, the mural, I'm very happy that it's here. I wouldn't, you know, for the next generation coming after me and long after me, uh, there are stories in it that they will be able to explore and learn more about themselves and feel a strong sense of, you know, belonging. I had no personal involvement in the mural. However, the organization I now manage 
um, were instrumental in setting up the Central Youth Provision, which came to be known as Central Club, and which eventually, uh, you know, worked with Red Mill Council to commission the the mural. Um, and uh, we, the organisation that is was um, set up by. Um, the BAME community in Reading um, to advocate for the rights of the black community um, back in the 60s when uh, racism was quite rife and, and overt. I came on board pretty late, but um, as someone who lived in Reading, I saw what was going on and one or two of the youngsters who were commissioned to help paint um, the building, I sort of knew. Sort of growing up. I'm the chairman of an organisation called Aspire CIC, and we're the legal entity, um, the legal arm, if you wish, and campaigning arm of the Caribbean Associations Group. And that's an umbrella organisation that represents the interests of the Reading Black Diaspora. For me, the mural is more than uh, it's more than just a, a painting with pictures. I feel like, um, I feel as though people are acknowledging people like me in Reading. I feel that it means, it shows that we belong, that we're here, and we've been here a long time. Well, long before I started working for Alliance for Cohesion and Racial Equality, um, I, I, I had come to know the mural. Um, in fact, I was in Reading when it was commissioned and, and um, eventually painted um, and it became a reference point not only for the mural but also the building that um, it was aligned with. I, I, it's, the, the mural is amazing it sends a, I was chatting to someone earlier and it sort of sends a tingle down my spine just just thinking about uh, just, I don't know, it's, it's an amazing artwork and what it means to the, the uh, community in Reading and, and, and wider and it, just the, the, the fact that it's it's local history, it's got local people in, it's got internationally famous people in. It's just, it's just an amazing uh, work of art that, yeah, like I say, sends a tingle down my spine. Well, in a way, it's inspiring to see those people and to know their history and what they've gone through. But more importantly, um, just seeing the mural um, is like a beacon to the black community to say that we have arrived and we have committed ourselves and there is a an artifact now in place that belongs to us and is immovable. For me personally um, I, I see it as a um, legacy to our forebearers who were here in Reading who came over to help um, work within the hospitals and the bus service and so forth. So like my parents who came over in 1958, um, I see the mural as a commemoration to them and what they've done in sort of helping Reading to become the town it is today. In a way, it's more about a passion. Um, I, I have children, I have two girls and it's an important thing for them to learn about their history and the significant people in our history, the significant people in the struggle for us to establish our identity and to recognize that our culture um, is as important as anyone else and that there's a sense of belonging. You know, we had racial equality um, legislation in place but racism was just as rife. And if you've lived in London and tasted a bit of it and you come to Reading and you see uh, your history being celebrated in that, you know, that openly, you, you begin to appreciate the steps that have been taken. Um, and, I, and I think um, for us the thought process was, yes, finally the black man was being recognised in a positive and open way. And the question is, well, why haven't they gone further? Because we do have our own local heroes who, you know, worked hard to, to you know, achieve racial harmony, racial equality, harmony, whatever you perceive that to be in, in Reading. And why, have, why has the council not commissioned a second mural to celebrate our modern heroes? First of all, I, I look at it and being um, black faces, I sort of 
look at it and think, right, okay, I can connect with those. Um, because as a youngster growing up in Reading, we, we didn't really have anything to say, right, that's our own. And so in having the mural there, it was something that you could look at and be proud of. And f for me, if you have to direct anyone in Reading, then one of the first things you ask them is, do you know where the mural is or do you know where the oracle is? So to me, it's just as important as um, having the oracle there. And it, it just shows that um, black people belong, so to speak. Well, I've been in Reading for 30 years and from the time I've been here, that mural's been here and it's impacted my life because I've been able to use that mural to educate my children every time we've driven past it. I, I think one of the things that Black Lives Matter has done has created an awakening in all of us and, and black people in Britain have always been represented by way of our history of slavery and you can go around any part of Britain and you see historical buildings, historical figures, and it's never been positive for black people, i.e. they've always been part of the um, plantation leadership, uh, i.e. people who've um, owned slaves and have provided wealth. So Huntley and Palmers, a big business in, in this area, have made their wealth on the basis of plantations in the Caribbean. If you go into Reading Forbury, there's a massive lion there for the 7th Regiment in the Berkshire Regiment and there were a, an army that was sent into Jamaica to suppress the slave rebellion. We don't have anything that says, well, this is a positive thing that represents me and my children uh, 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 um, that they could look up to and be proud of. I think it's critical that the mural should be and we have um, applied to Historic England for it to be listed as a heritage site in the same way as Stonehenge or any other public monument. And the critical thing is that if we are successful, and I know we will be successful, this will be the first piece of public art, first monument that's for black people, being created by black people that will be celebrated not only by black people, but all of Reading stakeholders, uh, and, and probably nationally and internationally. The day Black Lives Matter demonstrations came to Reading, uh, we all moved from town centre to the mural. And that was where part of some of the speeches, the opening speeches were made. And you, 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 know, you were filled with a sense of pride, you were filled with a sense of achievement, that finally we have you know, a shrine that we can go to. And I think that is what the, the mural represents to the black community in Reading. That that is our place, that is our depiction, that is celebrating our history. And his, if, if issues are affected, it, that is where we would start the discussion. And I think it has to be maintained, it has to be preserved. People need to understand not only the history of the, of the, um, you know, the, the figures on, on, the, on the mural, but also the history of the community in Reading and what that mural means to them. I certainly hope that the mural will be there for in perpetuity and it will continue to ask questions. It will continue to empower us to remember that we define who we are. We are also mindful of the journey of the people before us and it reminds us every time we see it. Uh, because too often um, in history, or the way history is taught, it's not taught from necessarily the perspective, maybe there may be anecdotes, but it's not taught from the perspective of the people who are part of that journey, especially us, you know, and how we, how we were, how we did things, and what our hopes and aspirations are for the future. And within that mural, as I touched on earlier, there's so many um, amazing people and who did wonderful things locally and who did wonderful things nationally and who did, did wonderful things internationally. 
So I hope that it continues to inspire people to remember the people who came before us because I think in a journey such as this, it's important to remember the people who came before. No matter what you do, the people who came before, we are now the custodians of that particular journey and then we pass the baton on to another one and they take it on. So I'm happy that at this moment in time I'm here given an opportunity to speak about it. I never expected that. Um, to be honest and truthfully there are other people perhaps more deserving of being able to tell you more about the mural but for me um, it's really important that we continue to admire it we continue to appreciate it and it's symbolic that with the BLM movement as it is people are taking more of an interest in the mural so had it not been there we wouldn't be having this interview you see what I mean? So it shows you how significant it really is. My name is Dennis Small. Um, I used to be chairman of the steering committee for Central Club. And my involvement was to help paint the mural after it was designed by Alan Howard. We saw it as a beautiful mural. and We weren't sure how long it would last, if the council would leave it up for as long as it has been left up. Um, when we first started to paint it, um, it was finished and it got damaged. We had um, some people who objected to it, they threw white paint all over it. So we had to um, repair that. Um, if you look at the mural, there's a small section on the bottom right hand side. It's in white, it has names on it of people who've either been injured or died in police custody. That was the main thing that was um, blotted out with the white paint. Um, after we cleaned off the paint, the council didn't want us to um, put the names back up, but one of the artists, um, Sharon Titus, she put the names back up. I think there was like several designs, but Alan had the vision of what he would like to see in the mural. And even though we never got involved in saying yes or no, because he was part of the community at the time and he had the, well, he got the vibes from everybody in the club. He knew which direction this mural should go. I feel proud when I go past that painting, um, not just for the fact that I was involved in it, but the size of it as well. And its prominence where it is, it's the inner distribution road. Everybody who comes down there sees that. It was an honor to be honest, because, um, I never got involved in anything like that before. The younger ones coming up, they can actually go and see the people who painted this mural, get um, some ideas from them. Um, also, they can see prominent black people from history who've done significant things. Um, a lot of times, like when I was at school, we did history. Um, we couldn't really relate to history. And you found that certain sections they go to history classes, but they never really got involved in it. It never generated any passion. But with something like that, they can say, yes, there's something we've done. Um, we can look back in the past and we can relate to these different figures in the past and say, yeah, we have a place. If this wall could talk, sing the songs of freedom, chant the mantras of wisdom and tell the people where they came from, if these pictures could tell you their thousand words, they'd tell you how they each changed the world. They'd teach the truth of how we were up front and centre from the beginning. Not hidden figures, but we were kings and nobles. And now our faces should be immortalised on this here stronghold. If this wall could speak, this wall would say no. It would tell you how it had a dream. Each individual face living together and free. Each hand joined together as a chain of DNA that you can trace back to where we came from and tell the story of why we came here. Notice that it's my face taking up space that I earned. My coils adorning this wall like a tapestry. My eyes looking out to the world I wanted to see. From the motherland to the furthest reaches of time, it's always a question of how far we will now go. If this wall spoke in its own language, you could translate this art into history. Just like the paintings on cave walls preserved by early man, this street art should be regarded as a renaissance painting. 
Unlike vandalism that can become political activism and statues praised for their parts in oppression, this monument should take prime position as a literal pillar of the community. Standing within a space of transition, it stands as our decision to celebrate our triumphs, where there are constant reminders of the call for our downfall. So hopefully now you see the full picture. The irony that people who stood for so much in life could be torn down in memory. But just like before, when systems tried to dismantle them, all these faces and their stories are building us up again. The past, raising up the future.